Oh man, I saw a new fucked up movie. That's right, sickos. We get to talk about something nasty again. Isn't that great? I miss it, honestly. I think that it's very frustrating that we had years of pandemic happen and then we couldn't watch new, gross, terrible things in a room filled with other people. And I think that's a shame. You know, I remember the first time I saw Neon Demon in the theater, I thought that it was just the nastiest thing that could ever have existed and that gave me so much life because I saw it in an audience of people that basically just walked out in disgust. And I I don't know, that was amazing. And The Green Inferno, right? Not a great movie. Like seeing that in a, in a theater with other people and other people getting disgusted was fucking hysterical. I'm pretty excited about the possibility of one day seeing a fucked up movie with friends again. Hi, I'm Maylitz from the internet. I'm currently blowing up right now. You You've probably heard of me. Um, and if you haven't heard of me, good. This is your last chance. You you don't have to know about me. And I honestly probably would prefer, you know, if we both just sort of part ways now. That said, I'm assuming you're sticking around so high. Yes, I'm Maylitz. Hello to those of you in Finland, in specific. For some reason, it seems that my Finnish audience is just my most active. So, hello, Finland. It looks like y'all are my best friends. I gotta tell you what, I could not have been more excited for the possibility of crimes of the future and what it could have beheld for my weird, weird little eyes. So, all right, um, I guess I'll do quickly like a rundown of what the movie is so that if you're attracted to the concept of seeing this movie, you can go do that. If you're like n not interested in actually watching the movie and just want to know what's inside, I'll tell you all of about it, sister. I'll tell you all about it. Sit down, children. Let me tell you the story of crimes of the future. Okay, so in in the in the short surmised version, for those of you that still want to see the movie, uh, the movie is a very good movie in my opinion. I I actually when it was over, I turned to the people I was with and I said, "Wow, that was." perfect for me. <laughs> and I don't really give a shit about quality, to be honest with you. I don't care if something is like traditionally good. I just want something to be, you know, perfect for me. You know, a creepy weirdo movie. I like creepy weirdo movies, which is why David Cronenberg and I have a very, very successful relationship. So let's pretend for a minute that you might be a simpleton who doesn't know things, like you're an idiot or like a stupid person like myself. Uh, maybe you just have a hard time remembering names. Cronenberg, my dude, has directed many, many movies that have made me go, eh. <laughs> Famously, you've probably seen The Fly, the, the Jeff Goldblum movie, The Fly, where Jeff Goldblum plays the creepiest weirdo scientist guy who slowly turns into a fly that anyone has ever seen. Truly a horror amongst horrors. It's very, um, I think the professional, like, adult term for this is Kafka-esque. But it's body horror. It's just horror that makes you go, e -e -e. I don't like the concept of that being like my existence, right? So Crimes of the Future, you know, it's years later and the man is still a creepy weirdo. And if there's one thing that I think is fantastic about the movie, it's that it is clearly made by someone who is a creepy weirdo and that's his like main function in directing. He wants to make me uncomfortable. There's a scene about... A uh, I'm going to call it five minutes into the movie where two characters talk about what actually the future entails. And we learn a couple tidbits about uh, David Cronenberg's version of the future here. People stopped feeling pain altogether. Fantastic. Great news. Also, people have developed a weird almost fetish for surgery, which I guess would happen if they couldn't feel pain. If you couldn't feel pain, you'd probably be poking and prodding at your body a little bit more. On top of that, there's also this like new echelon of human evolution going on where a bunch of people are developing new organs all the time. There's kind of this compounding issue where it's like, well, I don't feel pain and I'm growing all these weird organs that are probably going to kill me. I should hire somebody to cut them out of me regularly. So people start viewing the inside of their body and the outside of their body as like one in the same cosmetically. People start tattooing their organ. Things start to get a little bit 
bit spooky ooky on the whole, like, what if the boundaries of the inside of your body and the outside of your body were no longer a thing? What if pain was no longer a factor and you could really, like, investigate and be a part of the internal workings of your body? Terrifying idea, to tell you the truth. But luckily, there are people that want to have sex with it. That's the great part about the movie, by the way. And and I'm sorry it took me, like, all of five minutes to truly reveal that to you. The, the, the thing about the movie is that people want to, um, how do I? They want to have sex uh, with their organs inside of them. So there's this weird fetishization of the internal workings of the body it, and, and also this fetishization of surgery. Not only do people decide, well, we can do surgery to remove these organs, but they're also like, why don't we turn this into performance art? let a bunch of people watch us remove these organs. So they start having people come in and watch, and it turns into performance art, where people start to get a name for themselves as performance artists for the weird, crazy surgery they're doing regularly. There's also a weird pleasure to it, apparently. So when you stick a, the, the scalpel into the chest cavity, apparently there's a spot in there that'll get you off, which is very exciting uh, to me. Vigo more the boy from The Lord of the Rings. You'll remember him as Aragorn. Anyway, he's a bottom in this movie, which is basically to say he grows a lot of organs. He needs somebody to cut those organs out of him. And while you're cutting the organs out, if you could go ahead and pleasure me, that'd be fantastic. In front of many people, in an exhibitionist fashion, he gets his organs removed in a sexual way with his partner, and everyone just sort of enjoys that. Ah, the entertainment of the future is looking great. But, lo, there are problems. Uh, there are limits to this. What what constitutes a crime in this world? Like, where, where like people are doing rogue science, rogue medical science like this. And there's also this performative element. And it's like, you know, people can die in the middle of surgery, even if they don't feel pain. What are the ethics of all of this? There's always the threat that somebody's going to grab, you know, I don't know, some child off the street and be like, we're going to torture this child with surgery. There's a plane overhead. We're going to torture this child with surgery um, in front of many people for money. This is, of course, not a great thing, and we don't like that. We're more on the camp of the people that, like, want to, you know, have sex with the internal workings of someone's, like, stomach, for instance. A at that point, I think I gotta, I gotta reveal that, that anything beyond that is a spoiler. And I know all of that sounds like spoilers. That sounds like a shitload of information that I just threw at you. And you're right. It is a shitload of information. But it is also information that is entirely covered in the first five minutes of the movie. Everything that I've just told you is not a spoiler. It is the premise of the movie. The movie goes from there. The movie starts with these ideas. And then it goes buck wild from there. So if you want to see the movie, maybe this is the time to go ahead and tap it. Uh, you know, I'll see you later. Go watch the movie. Come on back. We can talk shit about it together. Tell your friends and make sure to buy my dirty book, Fluids. Here, hold on. I got a copy of it. Yeah, buy, buy my book. Anyway, go have a good day. Now, for those of you dirty weirdos that stayed, I loved this movie. <laughs> I loved this fucking movie so much because at about, like, I don't know, I'm going to call it the halfway point, there's like some compounding sexual tensions going on that deeply delighted me. So Kristen Stewart is in the movie and she plays a woman that is dreadfully horny for surgery. Like she is foaming at the mouth to have some surgery done to her and be pleasured in what they're now calling the second sex. Uh, Viggo Mortensen at one point says, I've never been very good at, at the first sex. But second sex is great, apparently. And also it completely defies the concepts of sexuality and gender. So like people are just just doing surgery on each other and there's no like real boundary there. So on top of that, okay, so what is an artist in the future? They're a rogue surgeon who has reprogrammed these like autopsy machines that would like do these automatic autopsies into surgery performance theater machines. Then they have people come lay in the machine and then they do surgery in the machine using the autopsy machine. Very cool idea. It gets spicy when people decide 
decide that they're going to have sex inside the autopsy machine. Okay, understand that if you're having sex inside the autopsy machine, you're going to get a little cut. So there's just a lot of like, there's some surgery going on and they're doing sex and it's weird second sex shit and it's kinky and it's in the autopsy machine. So that's nice. We love that. Uh, also, the, the, the fucking weird thing about growing new organs constantly is that you're in perpetual horrific pain. Our boy Vigo Mortensen has to sleep on this like very special bed that constantly contours to like whatever his pain level is and his need. So it it's kind of this freaky looking nightmarish loud bed that's just like constantly cranking around so that he doesn't have to feel the horrible pain. And then he also has to sit in a breakfast chair. <laughs> I can't. I can't with the breakfast chair. Okay, hear me. There's a breakfast chair. <laughs> There's a breakfast chair. Okay, so the thing is, he, he, he's he got abdominal problems because he's growing all these weird organs and shit. He has to, like, eat his food, but also his body is, like, having to digest it manually. So he has, ha he has a breakfast chair where he sits in the chair, the chair rocks, and it, it helps him digest the food. The, the, the kicker here being that he has a completely different digestive system and needs to feed on plastics, which is something that's way later. At the end of this, I know that you're thinking there's no way that they end the movie on the fact that people start eating plastic, but congratulations, you found it. They do, in fact, end the movie on people discovering that they eat plastic. Fantastic. This is a good solution to a lot of the, uh, you know, pollution we've got. You just lay down and have yourself a snack. Anyway, so the reason he has these digestive issues is because he He's actually supposed to be eating plastic, but is failing to eat the plastic. Everyone is afraid, you see, of eating plastic. So, like, that ends up being kind of weirdly the uh, the whole crux of the movie. So now I'm just going to spoil the shit out of the whole movie. So the movie actually ends up being entirely about the whole plastic digestive system thing. Okay, so there's a kid. He eats plastic. His parents are very scared because he eats plastic. So his mom kills him. So he's dead. But the rogue surgeon virgin art vibe is what if we sort of uh pull this kid uh, in his dead body into the autopsy machine, and then we perform an autopsy on him, remove the special organs that can eat the plastic, and then it will be like a demonstration of a wildly new organ that could completely revolutionize the world. But evolution, it turns out, is like banned. They don't want people evolving rapidly, so everybody is not allowed to really experience any kind of evolution. And if they are, that is is, in a lot of ways, a crime of the future. The crime of the future is, is evolving into a state of being that is no longer quite human in the traditional sense. So there turns out to be a whole bunch of people that surgically had it so that they could eat plastic. They, they've they like lived underground in this like underground kind of society for a little while eating plastic. So this rogue group of people have surgically altered themselves so that they can eat plastic. And they're really happy about the child because the child is like the divine touch. He was just born with the organ necessary to eat the plastic. Uh, the end of the movie, they, they cut the kid open in, in front of people to see the organ, but they find that the organ has been stolen and his organs were tattooed and like yeah ah. it's like really hard to talk about uh much of this movie without literally just being like here watch the movie because it's just something so otherworldly like genuinely i don't think i've ever seen a movie like crimes of the future i don't even think that my homie david cronenberg has made a movie that is even comparable to crimes of the future um there is this short film that david cronenberg made a long time ago about a woman whose boob she believes is filled with bugs so she needs to get it removed it's this short film it's on youtube somewhere uh and it's very creepy <laughs> it's very very creepy this movie is comparable to that in tonality this movie goes so hard on the sexual dimension and so that's why it just, I, I mean now i get to talk about my favorite thing in the movie which i think is everyone's favorite thing in the movie but there is 100 percent object objectively a moment in the movie Vigo Mortensen gets a like a zipper put on his on his stomach so that he can easily open himself up and see what the organ situation is in there. And his partner is like, yo, I love the fact that you've got that. 
hey, wouldn't it be cool if in this tunnel I just sort of unzipped that right now and then just sort of ate that sort of out? So there in in a tunnel, we watch Vigo Mortensen get his stomach. I don't stussy. I don't know what to call that. Um, eaten by a lady, which is pretty rad. I expected this movie was going to be horny. I did not know that this movie was going to be dangerously horny. And I also did not know it was going to completely fuck gender and sexuality completely. I guess that it makes a lot of sense. Like when it tracks, like opening the movie by being like, yeah, no one feels pain. Everybody loves surgery. And surgery is art now. And also surgery is sexual. Is just kind of like immediately setting me up for a movie that's going to be be fetishy the whole time like there's some kind of weird kink going on here and I don't know what it is it, it, it comes across like David Cronenberg genuinely sat down with his pencil and was like all right I'm gonna write down five new kinks and they're gonna be my kinks and you can't have them and then he made a movie about his five new cool weird kinks and you know genuinely I love that for him I'm I'm not complaining I think um I think his new kinks are very inventive and cool it, it is kind of hard to view this movie on any uh, level beyond. I, I sure do like the kinks they displayed here and I think that if we could see the, the uh, you know, next summer's edition of kinks, that would be fantastic. I just want David Cronenberg to continue making movies until I'm dead. Hopefully a little bit longer than he lives because he is very old at this point. But either way, like, ah oh man, I fucking loved this movie. I, I could talk ad nauseum just about little things in the movie. If I'm talking about like what what I the movie meant I guess I'm supposed to analyze the film at some point I'm supposed to do an analysis I think the movie has a lot to say about like life's tendency to try and adopt itself to deal with humanity's problems and how humanity usually finds a way to play a joke on its own natural predilections if that makes sense so while we may have the tools to fix the some of the problems that we humans have caused, we will instead use the tools of fixing it to, you know, spite each other and be assholes and have sex with each other. You cannot uh, underestimate the, the human ingenuity to do something completely abjectly absurd. So uh, Crimes of the Future, it's going to be one of those movies that I think people are going to be talking about a lot. I, I know that it's very divisive. A lot of people apparently hate the shit out of it. And you know, I don't blame you. I can I cannot imagine in the the kind of person that loves this movie other than myself. I feel like I would be a little bit afraid of the fans of this movie besides the fact that I myself am the fans of this movie. I feel like most people are like, eh, it's kind of good. It's kind of bad. Sometimes it's shocking. Sometimes it's not. The ending is a little bit, Ugh. if we're talking about me, I've got no problem. I've got nothing to say about it that's negative. I loved the movie and I would watch it again right this second and I'm so happy that it exists <laughs> so look that doesn't make my opinion better or, or worse than anybody who's smarter or whatever about this kind of shit it's mostly just about my predilections and the way that I feel about things personally I feel that not only is the movie deeply satisfying to me on like a creepy weirdo level but also I think that the movie is deeply satisfying on a narrative level everything they throw at me is very naturalistic to the world that they've built. And I want you to know, generally, I hate world building. That's like my big thing. I despise it. Like, I will do anything to avoid world building. Like, whenever they start world building in anything ever, I immediately go to sleep. In just a shot of this movie, they revealed to me that he eats in a breakfast chair and sleeps in a weird bed and, you know, grows all these weird organs and is having sex surgically. These are all amazing things uh, that I wouldn't even consider to be world building more than anything it's like it's trying to talk about the human situation i don't know if it was shot during covid or not i have a feeling it probably was but there are many sequences in the movie where people are standing like six to nine feet apart and they're having like an intimate conversation <laughs> and that part was kind of funny either way i would highly highly recommend crimes of the future to anyone everyone your mom should watch it yeah she should watch it and get and have to deal with the confounding deal uh, of the future and its its weird sexuality. Absolutely cannot let the boomers miss out on this great, great trash. So thank you for watching. I have been uh, 
uh, May Elites, as usual, or uh, Nick Spheres at Nick Spheres. That's the YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash Nick Spheres. Uh, also, yeah, buy my book, uh, Fluids. It's uh, it's apparently, I was at a show the other day. I, I do shows. Um, I'm going to be in LA on October 4th, by the way, shows. And somebody came up to me after the show and they said that Fluids was like a cult hit. I didn't know this. <laughs> I had no idea. So that's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for, for reading it. I, I can, I'm so humbled that we're at like something like 3,500 copies now, which is uh, wild, wild to me. Uh, wild, wild, wild. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Uh, make sure and support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Nick If you like what I do, leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time when I talk about something else that's really weird and probably horrible. But at least we're taking a break from not safe for life content, right, kids? All right. Y'all go have some milk and cookies and I'll see you, you know, tomorrow. Bye. Bye.